We've seen that describing the rates of surface reactions depends on knowledge of activation and reaction energies for each of our elementary steps. So we can write our rate as a function of reaction rate constants and equilibrium constants for our elementary steps, which in turn depend on activation energies and reaction energies. Based on a large number of DFT calculations, it's been demonstrated that these energetics are not all independent. By using correlations between these energetics, we can map the rate onto a small number of variables, which we'll call descriptors, greatly reducing the complexity of our problem of describing reaction rates. So to look at this, let's consider the binding of different CHX groups to metal surfaces. So Jens Norskov and co-workers calculated adsorption energies for these adsorbates on a series of transition metal surfaces. The summary of this data is shown here. So we can see here that the heats of adsorption of CH, so that's this line shown here, CH2, this line here, and CH3 depend linearly on the heat of adsorption of carbon. So we can write the energy of adsorption of any CHX intermediate as a linear function. The slope here will be denoted gamma, and it'll be a function of N, so whether it's CH, CH2, or CH3, times the energy of adsorption of carbon plus some constant. So this is an extremely useful result. Let's consider CO methanation as an example reaction to see why this is the case. So here we have a series of elementary steps for CO hydrogenation to methane. So this is a reaction that we've previously considered. So if we wrote out a rate equation for this reaction, we would have equilibrium constants that depend on the adsorption energies of CH, CH2, CH3. So now instead of having three variables of interest, we can replace all of that with linear functions of the adsorption energy of just carbon. So why is this the case physically? Why can we write the adsorption energies of any methyl fragment as a linear function of the adsorption energy of carbon? Well, all of these adsorbates bind to the surface through carbon. So adsorbed, they might look something like this. So the primary variable that determines the adsorption strength is the metal carbon bond strength. So if changing from catalyst A to catalyst B, for example, we increase the metal to carbon bond strength, we'll also bind CH, CH2, and CH3 stronger. This same trend is also observed for other surface intermediates that bind through the same atom. So if we plotted the adsorption energies for NH and NH2 relative to the adsorption energy of nitrogen, it would look something like this. So again, we have a linear scaling relationship between the adsorption energy of NH and NH2 with respect to the adsorption energy of nitrogen. These trends are also not limited to metal catalysts. Similar trends are observed for metal oxides, nitrides, sulfides, carbides. So for more information on this, you can check out this paper again from Jens Norskopf's group with the citation shown here. So returning to our plot for CHX fragments, we can see that the more similar the intermediate is to our x-axis variable, carbon, the closer the slope is to one. That means that the adsorption energy of CH responds more to changes in the metal carbon bond strength than say CH3 does. In essence, forming more bonds to hydrogens lowers the number of bonds that the adsorbate can make with the surface. Furthermore, looking at the magnitude of the slopes, so here a value of 0 0.75, 0 0.5, and 0.25, suggests that we can develop a quantitative rule based on the valency of the adsorbate. We can write that the slope of the scalene relation gamma depends on n minus n over uppercase n. So here, defining what these terms mean, n is the maximum valence of the adsorbate. So this would be four for carbon, say, three for nitrogen, two for oxygen, and so on. And our variable lowercase n says the number of bonds saturated by bonding to other atoms and not the surface. So just as an example here for CH2, our uppercase n is going to be equal to four, since carbon can make four bonds, minus two that are saturated to hydrogen, divided by four. So this would predict a slope of 0.5, for a scaling relation, which is here exactly what we observe from the DFT calculations. So these scaling relations give us a way to express reaction energies and thus equilibrium constants as a function of one or just a few variables. This greatly simplifies our task of quantitatively describing catalytic reaction rates. In the next video, we'll see that transition state energies are similarly not independent from reaction energetics.